Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, we will discuss the top five best 4K cameras of 2022. All the product links are given in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Best for filmmaking, Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. This is a new variant of the company's pocket cinema camera. These are serious cinema cameras designed to look and handle like regular handheld cameras at a price that frequently undercuts them. There are a few key features of this camera worth a closer look at. First, as a Super 35 format sensor rather than a full frame. Its use of Canon EF lenses might look a little backward in the mirrorless age. Still in cinema, the Canon EF format is second only in popularity to the PL mount. If you're coming to the camera from a mirrorless or DSLR model, you will have to sacrifice a few home comforts. There is no continuous autofocus, so although it can focus for you ahead of recording, you'll have to do your own manual pull focusing after that. Maybe set up a rig with a follow focus unit. This is a big camera. It gets even more significant when you put a lens on the front because the body has to accommodate the extra flange depth of the EF mount lenses, even if it doesn't have a mirror. Officially, it only supports EF lenses, but we've heard from users who use EFS lenses too. One of ours didn't seem to want to fit, but another went on just fine. This has extraordinary value for the money. Plenty of mirrorless cameras cost more than this and do a lot less for the filmmaker's point of view. But it's not really an appropriate comparison. This is not a mirrorless alternative with no in-camera stabilization, no continuous autofocus, and support only for Canon EF lenses. This big ponderous camera will be at its best in planned productions and shoots where you've got time to get everything right. And while it can be used as is, straight from the box, it needs to be rigged up to the extra gear, especially a better screen to deliver the best work. Best hybrid, Sony a7S III. It's taken Sony five years to upgrade the video-centric a7S II to Mark III. Still, the wait has been worth to keen enthusiasts and professional movie makers. It might not boast some of its rivals, 6K or 8K resolution. With only 12.1 megapixels, it's not a powerhouse super still machine either. But apart from the extensive and expensive cinema camera, it's the only camera that can shoot 4K at 60 pixels, full frame with no crop, recorded internally in 10-bit 4x2x2 by by with no limitations on recording time, and with all the advanced autofocus functions still working. It is all about the 4K video from the 12.1 megapixel sensor, and specifying a sensor which such a low resolution, by modern standards, might just as well be Sony's moment, instead of fitting a much higher resolution sensor just to steal a few headlines or make still shooters happy. Instead of using valuable computing power and the heat it generates, the pixel binning or line skipping high resolution files to get them down to 4K is designed around full frame 4K shooting. The larger but fewer pixels on the sensor give huge benefits at high ISO and read much faster, reducing the dreaded rolling shutter that blights many mirrorless cameras. Sony's cameras continue to evolve and this takes the learnings from the A7R4 and improves them. There are better buttons, a deeper grip, a separate mic jack, a fully articulating screen and a full-size HDMI port with a screw-on cable cage. The record button has been made much bigger and moved to the top plate. And the movie and S and Q buttons are next to the usual PASM settings on the dial instead of on the other side of the custom buttons. It just makes things easier to change. Best budget, a Keizo Brave 7LE. This insanely good value action camera is ideal for vloggers thanks for a tiny front mounted selfie screen, but it also is a great action camera for anyone else after a low price all arounder. It's not the perfect 4K action camera, still it's reliable, easy to use and has a treasure trove of accessories. Right out of the box, know that there is one thing that this lacks. Its 4K video at 30 frames per second is going to please most users and indeed almost any vlogger, although the action camera market has moved on to bigger and better things like the GoPro which all feature 4K video at 60 frames per second. Used as an outdoor still camera, this impresses. Not only is it toughly made and completely weatherproof, but there's a standard tripod thread on its undercarriage, with an HDMI output under a flap on the side. The fixed focus means you need to keep subjects at least 20 inches and 50 centimeters away, and the fisheye lens ensures that straight lines look more curved closer to the edge of the frame. However, you can easily lessen the effect with super wide, wide, medium, and narrow modes. And use of the six axis stabilization introduces a nice smooth video without going too crazy. It's not as powerful as a system as you'll find on a GoPro, nor does it produce a woozy looking dream sequence. Instead, it knocks the wobbly edges off the video and makes it watchable, which is what image stabilization should do. There's really no reason not to use it off a tripod. Best compact, Sony RX107. This gives a little hint of its power from the outside. It's barely more significant than a regular point and shoot compact. Although, though when you power it up, the lens extends, it's a slightly different story, especially when you zoom to 200 millimeters. The body has a semi-matte black finish, which is a little slippery, and there's no grip on the front to help you keep a secure hold. 
There is an electronic viewfinder, but it's hidden. You slide a switch on the side of the camera to pop it up, then push it back down into the body when you're done. The one inch sensor is a bit step up in size from the smaller sensors in smartphones and point and shoot cameras. The Zeiss branding on the 24 to 200 millimeter lens promises premium performance. It is blindly fast at continuous shooting, but getting too excited about this is difficult because it's just the wrong size and shape for sports and wildlife photography, and you can't change lenses. Autofocus tracking is high speed and effective. However, some subjects will still defeat it if they move too fast to follow smoothly. The animal eye autofocus is uncannily effective provided your subject is relatively close, it has well-defined eyes, and isn't darting around too quickly. Posed pet portraits will be easy, fast-moving animals might be trickier. Best overall, Panasonic Lumix GH5S. This is extremely powerful and has excellent value. Its high ISO performance still lags slightly behind its bigger sensor rivals. Still professionals will love its high frame rates, 10-bit 4x2x2 recording and high bit rates. It's not all good, the lack of sensor-based stabilization will put many people off, and the 10 megapixel resolution is just too low for it to be convincing stills camera. It can also shoot continuously at 12 frames per second in autofocus S mode, with the focus locked to that of the first frame, for 8 frames per second with continuous autofocus. That's if you're happy with 12-bit raw files though. Suppose you want the extra tonal depth of 14-bit raw files, which is generally what high-end stills cameras shoot. In that case, the frame rate drops to 11 frames per second with single shot autofocus or 7 frames per second with continuous autofocus. The relatively low resolution of the sensor does offer a payback in other areas. For any given sensor size, low resolution means longer photo sites. This means better light gathering power, less noise, and in principle, better dynamic range. Here, this all new sensor brings a clever technological twist, dual native ISO. This is a feature taken from Panasonic's professional video camera range. The sensor has dual circuits that can switch to a higher native sensitivity before the game. Light amplifying processors occurs. The technology is complex, but the outcome is simple. Panasonic claims it delivers less noise at high sensitivities, allowing an unprecedented maximum sensitivity for micro four thirds sensor of ISO 51200. This camera's video specifications might not look particularly remarkable to a stills photographer. It shoots 4K video, but, but so do many others. It also shoots the slightly wider camera 4K DCI 4K format, which has a ratio of 17 to 9 rather than a 16 to 9. It can however shoot both at 50 pixels and 60 pixel frame rates, which is altogether less common and requires serious processing power, which inevitably comes at a price. If you want to capture cinema 4K or 4K Ultra HD footage at 10-bit 4x2x2 quality and 50 to 60 frames per second, it will only do this via an external device. The ability to shoot in multiple recording formats will appeal to many videographers. This shoots 8-bit 4K video in the XAVCS format with a bit rate of 100 megabits per second. In contrast, the GH5S shoots at 10 bits 4K footage at twice the frame rate in various formats with bit rates up to 400 megabits per second. On paper, one 4K camera looks much like another, but it's clear there are considerable differences once you dig deeper. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you loved it. Take a moment to hit the bell icon so you'll get notified of all our new latest uploads.